My dear students, today we have a lecture on the status of women in the British period. God created both man and woman. Since the dawn of human civilization, both man and woman together carried the burden of mankind. But from the ancient period, it is found that only a few well-to-do and higher class women received the honor and the rights of women. Most women throughout the history were denied their rights. They were treated as a being a little more than animals. They were not allowed to have education and other facilities. Girls were not allowed education nor were allowed to go openly. But one thing is recognized by the world that Indian women are pious and religious in their character and nature. When British rule came to India, Western scholars observed that Hindu women are naturally chaste and more virtuous than other women of the world. Social reformer and their roles. The British crown assumed the administrative charge of India from East India Company in 1858. Although at the higher level a woman could become equal to her counterparts spiritually as well as could become a ruler or regent of her children at the death of her ruler husband. She had the right to get training for war tactics. Maharani Lakshmi Bai, who participated in the 1857 mutiny, is an example. In normal circumstances, women faced male domination and the atrocities from the early period. By the end of 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, many reformist organizations were founded. Raja Ram Mohan Roy founded Brahma Samaj, Dayananda Saraswati found Arya Samaj, and the Vivekananda created Ram Krishna Mission. There were other social reformers like Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar, Ram Krishna Paramahans, Kesab Chandra Sen, Maharishi Kare, Mahadev Ranade, Gopal Krishna Kokhle. They formed against the oppression and the atrocities to women. They condemned and went against such practices as sati, polygamy, child marriages, ban on widow marriages, etc. They also helped women to get education. It may be worth mentioning that the British administration of that period, along with Indian social reformers, tried to eliminate the brutal practices against women. Thus, we find that many attempts were made to rise the status of women during the period of British rule. There were a number of socio-religious reformers in the country adopted by the British rulers. Annie Besant and Mahatma Gandhi also took interest in the social and the political rights of Indian women. The life of Indian women is the life of restrictions and the prohibitions. On the one hand, child marriages and the polygamy were prevalent and on the other hand, ban on widow marriages, denial of property rights and the right to education to women were a social norm. Social reformists like Raja Ram Mohan Roy, Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar, met pioneering efforts towards upliftment of the woman's status. Raja Ram Mohan Roy played an instrumental role in abolition of the practice of sati. He also raised his voice against parda system that was imposed on women. Again, it was the result of the great effort of Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar that Widow Remarriage Act of 1856 was introduced. Revolt of Women 
Indian women are pious and the religious in their character. Ordinarily, they are peaceful and the a better half to her husband in the strict sense and the literal meaning of the term. But at the time of crisis, they will come out in the forefront. It was found in many occasions during British rule period. Kittur Chanama, queen of the princely state Kittur in Karnataka, led an armed rebellion against the British rule in response to the doctrine of lapse. Abbaka Rani, queen of coastal Karnataka, led defense against European armies, particularly that of the Portuguese in the 16th century. Begum Hazrat Mahal took active part in Avadha's revolt in 1857. The Begums of Bhaval were also female rulers who joined this revolt. In Manipur, Rani Gaidin Liu raised against the atrocities of the British rule. Change of political and the socio-economic structure. British rule in India made several changes in the socio-economic structure of the society. During British rule, substantial progress had been made towards the education of women and their rights in the field of politics, employment and the social phenomenon. There were also positive changes towards the elimination of inequalities between men and women. Industrialization, urbanization, social movements and the improvement in the education system of the women were the major advancement in the way of uplifting the status of women in the period of British rule in India. Such positive changes affected the status of women. It will not be right to say that there were no positive contribution during the British period. On the other hand, wives of missionaries such as Maratha Malt Ni Maat and her daughter Eliza Codwell Ni Malt should rightly be remembered for their pioneering work in the field of education and the training the South Indian girls. A girls school were started in Bombay in 1824. A former student of Hindu college, Calcutta, Piyari Chandra Charkar set up the first free school for girls in India in 1847 in Birasat near Calcutta. Maharshi Karve took up the challenges for widow remarriage and the education of women. He established SNDT Women's University in Maharashtra in 1916. Education for women was identified as a major instrument for the upliftment of the status of women. But the Calcutta, Bombay and the Madras universities did not permit admission of women up till 1875. The Hunter Commission emphasized the need for female education in 1881 and after 1882 girls were allowed to go for higher education. There were two other major movements worth mentioning that affected the position of women. The first one is the social reform movement of the 19th century and the other one is the nationalist movement that became a major force in the first quarter of the 20th century. Upliftment of women's status A powerful force that helped the upliftment of women's status and the broad change in attitude towards women was Indian nationalist movement. Both higher class urban women as well as simple rural women participated various satyagrahas launched by Gandhi. Some of the major women organizations like Bharat Mahila Parishad 1904, Bharat Stri Maha Mandal 1910, Women's Indian Association 1917, 
National Council of Women in India 1925 and the All India Women's Conference 1927 took up issues as like women education, abolition of social evils, equalities of rights, etc. Western education was one of the prime factors that encouraged Indian women's movement. Another important factor was positive and the sympathetic attitude of nationalist leaders towards women's movement. In 1917, the first India's delegation met the Secretary of State to demand women's political right. This was supported by Indian National Congress. The All India Women's Education Conference was held in Pune in 1927. Muhammad Ali Zina tirelessly worked for the ban on early child marriage. Through his effort and also with the help of other nationalist leaders, the Child Marriage Restraint Act was passed in 1927. This act adopted 14th is the minimum age of marriage for a girl. Mahatma Gandhi urged people to boycott child marriage and they encourage young men to marry child widows. Impact of Western Education Impact of Western Education Leadership provided by educated women elites changing socio-religious attitudes and the philosophies and the decreasing social hostility were some other factors that encourage Indian women's movement. It may be noted that Chandramukhi Basu, Kadambini Ganguly and the Anandi Gopal Joshi were some of the earliest Indian women to obtain degrees. The short period prior to independence was a beginning of new era for the women. In this period, an awareness of the need to remove social disabilities of women was created. Women's organizations emerged to represent the needs and the cause of the middle class urban women, but it was not confined only to the urban educated women with the help of the sympathetic encouragement from the nationalist movement leaders. New horizons of hope were emerged with women's movement in different aspects and levels. Women's status in Manipur While the Indian women fought for their freedom from the oppressive attitude and the other restrictions, women in Manipur had a different story. They had better status compared to their Indian counterparts. Women were always treated highly and they were instrumental in many occasions of diplomacy and in way of foreign relations. They were not bound by male but held their male counterpart in different levels. Manipur, once a princely state, became a colony of British crown only in the 1891 and therefore British occupancy of Manipur was very short, that is 1891 to 1947. During this period, two great incidents related to women took place, both known as Nupi Lal or women's uprising against British rule. First women's uprising was in 1904 against British rule. It so happened that the British residency was gutted down by a fire, but the Britisher somehow believed that it was done by male Manipuris. They subsequently ordered that the men should go to Burma and the fetch thick timbers and build a new residence without giving any money. Manipuri women raised their voice against such an order to protect the respect of their male counterparts. There was a conflict between Manipuri women and the British rulers. Afterwards, the British withdrew their order. The second woman uprising occurred on December 12, 1939. In that year, there was a scarcity of food grains just after the harvesting time. 
men, women and the children who are facing starvation. Manipuri women raise their voice against the non-availability of food grains and ask the then administration to ban food grain export from Manipur. The administration, unable to face the women's uprising, subsequently order to stop the food grain export by businessmen. Now, conclusion. Modern education system awakened both men and women of the new generation. Many political, social changes have taken place in the last 60 years. We had seen women holding highest position in the country. Constitution of India also gives status for women in the various ways. Their rights were protected. The status of women notably changed after independence. Social and the political changes relating to women took place. But still, a long journey is in front of us. There are goals to be achieved. Thank you.